this lesson, I'll teach you on a high level what is Web3, what the blockchain is, and go into a little bit more detail about what an NFT is. And at the end, we'll explore some cool NFT projects together. What is Web3? My personal favorite definition is from Chris Dixon, where he says, Web3 is an internet owned by users and builders and orchestrated with tokens. So the main difference between Web2 and Web3 is that Web2 refers to anything that came from the social media era, for example, apps like uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And the difference between Web2 and Web3 is that uh, all the apps on Web2 are mainly centralized, meaning that one centralized company will have full control and ownership over everything and all the content that's on there. And Web3 is more decentralized in which uh, all the users and builders are uploading their data on the blockchain and it is more permanent, transparent, and also decentralized. So the main cons of centralization is that you don't truly control or own any of the content that's being put out there. So let's say you're an influencer on Instagram. Your entire resume and body of work exists as posts on Instagram, but because Instagram is a centralized entity or company, they can decide to shut your account down or take away your content at any point, and there's not really anything you can do about that. Therefore, in Web3, where content is decentralized, there is no centralized entity or company that can take control or ownership over your work. As a creator in Web3, you have full ownership over your creations, and it also creates new opportunities in which you can monetize and make money for yourself with your work. Web3 is all about things like efficiency, transparency of smart contracts, so that you don't have to worry about things like bank transfers or signing a bunch of unnecessary paperwork. Everything that happens in Web3 mostly happens on the blockchain, so now we're going to talk about what is the blockchain. The blockchain is the underlying technology that enables trustless transactions so that things like cryptocurrency and NFTs can exist on top of it. There's a lot of benefits to the blockchain, such as the fact that it's not manipulatable, and once data is stored on chain, it can't be reversed as well as the fact that everything is transparent for everyone to see. As a creator, you don't have to go through other distribution platforms. You can sell directly to your collectors and earn royalties. Once a creator gets a taste of money in Web3, it's really hard to go back to traditional ways. So for example, because with NFTs, you're getting paid right away when the sale goes through, you don't have to do things like uh, the awkward freelance dance of reaching out to your clients and being like, hey, when am I gonna get paid? And then, you know, waiting a few weeks or sometimes months for that to even happen. My previous work, I was doing mostly executing other people's visions and it was less creatively stimulating for me. But now my day-to-day -day looks a lot more different where I'm always uh, working on projects that in interest me and inspire me. And I'm not having to do work just for the sake of uh, making money to pay rent. This is just a really brief overview of the blockchain. If you're interested into diving into the nitty gritty of everything, in the resources tab, there's a link to a bunch of blog posts that really do a deep dive into what is the blockchain and a bunch more resources about the space. And so now that leads us to ask the question, what is an NFT? NFTs, also known as non-fungible tokens, allows you to assign or claim ownership attached to any digital asset uh, and it is tracked on the blockchain. Now there's a lot of different blockchains out there, but for this class, we're gonna focus exclusively on Ethereum. Ethereum is like a virtual computer that is run on a network of physical computers on the cloud, and you can build apps on it using smart contracts, which is code, or create tokens, which are either fungible, like cryptocurrency, or non-fungible, like NFTs. The difference between fungible and non-fungible is that something that is fungible means that you don't care if it is one or the other. For example, if you're going to a store and you're using a dollar bill, you don't care if this is a dollar bill that came from 1979 or 1992. Uh, whereas non-fungible means that within each token that is unique, you care whether or not it's uh, this one or the other one. And NFTs are non-fungible because you care whether or not your NFT is a people pleaser NFT or if it's an NFT from 7-Eleven. For this class, I'm focusing on Ethereum because Ethereum is the most popular blockchain that people are building apps on as well as making NFTs on. So how do you compare between the different blockchains? 
You can think of the different blockchains kind of like cities. So Ethereum would be most akin to some place like New York City, where it's the most popular, everybody's heard of it, everybody loves to visit or live there. Even though it's expensive, uh, you're also more likely to get noticed if you set up a shop there. NFT could represent digital art such as GIFs, collectibles, 3D objects, videos, music, they can also represent real world items such as tickets to an event or access to something you've created. The benefits of creating NFTs are that you can easily prove you're the creator, you determine the scarcity, you can earn royalties every time the NFT is resold, you can sell the NFT on a marketplace or directly, you're not locked into any platform specifically, and you don't need middlemen to intermediate your sales. The world of NFTs is not just about making sales, but it's also more importantly about the community that you build. So with building communities in Web3, there's a sense of ownership and belonging, and also people seek out communities that have values that resonate with them. When people buy NFTs, each project has their own specific cultures. In my opinion, one of the best ways to understand the space and participate is just to become a collector. So go out there and collect your first NFT, and then you'll know quickly what the experience of becoming part of a community is like. Everybody thinks about collecting NFTs differently, but the way that I like to think about it is that you should never spend money, especially more than you're willing to lose. And when I buy an NFT, I'm buying it because I like it and simply because I want to collect it, uh, not because I'm trying to make money off of it. Similar to when you go into a store and you're buying a hoodie, or a computer, you're spending that money not expecting anything in return. So I've been collecting NFTs for a while, and I wanna show you some of my favorite NFTs as well as other examples of utility NFTs. Here we're on OpenSea, and this is the site that most people like to use to browse NFTs. And these are some of the NFTs that I've collected over time. Here you can see all different kinds of NFTs. Uh, some of them take the form of digital art, such as this one. So this is a video of uh, art that I collected from an artist named Everfresh. And it's just a looping video. Now there's also other NFTs, for example, these are 3D object NFTs. So these are little bonsai trees that you can use to decorate your metaverse apartment with. And what I mean by that is there are other NFTs such as artifact space pods, which look like this. Now, what does it mean to own this NFT? They're actually literally 3D virtual spaces that you can own and go into. If I show you a live demo of this, you can enter somebody's space pod and it's fully interactive. And here you can see an apartment looking like space. And within this NFT, you can also hang and display your other NFTs as art on the walls. And lastly, there are also uh, utility NFTs, such as these uh, membership cards. And here is an example of one. These typically give you access to something that you might be interested in or a community that you want to be a part of. That's just a tip of the iceberg of what is possible and all the different kinds of NFTs, but yeah, really anything is possible within this space. So now I want you to go to the resources tab where you're gonna find a link for uh, all the people that I recommend following within the space just to get a sense of what it's like to be part of the community. So in the next lesson, we're gonna explore if NFTs are right for you. So join me there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.